the Nook Glow Light Plus, a water-resistant e-reader from Barnes & Noble, and it's the best value for your money, even compared to the Kindle. So e-readers come baked in with a few concerns. What is the point of an e-reader when everyone has a phone or iPad? Tablets allow for users to watch a video, respond to emails, surf the web, and every retailer has apps that allow for reading. And let's be honest, it's more convenient to carry around one device that does it all instead of several. That's what I'm saying. Reading with e-ink reduces eye strain since the e-ink technology emulates paper. This means the display is perfect during the day and the backlight on the device can be adjusted to your preference. And as someone who works on a computer all day, giving my eyes a rest is a huge plus. Another thing to note is that e-ink displays have plateaued in the past several years. What this means is that the quality of the displays are virtually identical among all the major brands. The 300 dpi screen on the Glowlight Plus, which is the same as the Kindle Paperwhite, and Kobo offerings. The big feature that the Nook has, along with some of the Kobo Auras, is that it's waterproof. Sporting an IP67 certification, the Glowlight Plus can be submerged underwater for up to 30 minutes down to a meter. And that's fresh water, so don't get reckless around salt water, which still tends to chew through electronics unless you wash it with fresh water after. Considering quite a few readers I know read at the beach, I'm surprised that Amazon hasn't made all Kindles waterproof, except for the Oasis, which has the price tag to justify it. Now, the e-reader doesn't work too well underwater, but you can immediately dry it off and it will work fine. Just make sure the USB port is dry before plugging it back in. Battery life is a wonderful change of pace compared to our phones and tablets because e-readers can survive weeks on a single charge. This is because e-ink doesn't drain power unless the screen is changing, so when you're reading, no power is being used. If you know what you're doing, keeping a backlight off or low, and then turning on Wi-Fi only when you need it, you can get about a month off a charge. I say about a month because I couldn't live with a dangerously low battery. Once my Nook reaches about 30 or 40% battery life, I charge it back up, and with my reading habits, I can go about three weeks before reaching that point. So we've talked about the inside of the device, now let's talk about the outside. The Glowlight Plus has one of my favorite looks of an e-reader. That should come to no surprise. Almost every other e-reader in the market comes in fashionable black, and that's it. The white bezels with the diamond pattern grip make it a distinctive and practical at the same time. And the back, which seems to meld between copper and gold depending on the light, is incredibly complementary to the style Barnes & Noble was going for. I'll be honest, I bought a leather sleeve case instead of a cover because I didn't want the design covered up. This is all well and good, but let's get to some of the issues people have with e-readers before we wrap up. First off, e-ink is great, but it is slow. Any e-reader has a slow refresh rate. Again, this technology has plateaued, so no manufacturer truly has a better edge. If you put all these e-readers side by side, you'll only notice minute differences because you were looking for them and not because you'd actually notice. Another moment of truth, I actually hell off on any e-reader due to the flicker the screen causes when flipping pages or opening menus. I'm happy to say this problem has been fixed for about two years and e-readers have drastically reduced the amount of annoying flicker that takes over the screen. The big talking point someone will have with the Glowlight Plus is the storefront itself. The Barnes & Noble ecosystem doesn't inspire a lot of trust from the hardcore elite. In my experience of using the store, I haven't actually found a true discernible difference. Honest, hand over heart, I find the books I'm looking for, and if you follow me on this channel, you'll know one of my big complaints about the Amazon Kindle store is that it's near useless since it's been covered by junk. I'm talking rampant miscategorization from erotica authors and scam books blocking all the stories I want to read. The benefit of the Barnes & Noble ecosystem is that it's relatively clean. Now, one can say the Nook ecosystem is more expensive, but even then I disagree. I follow plenty of newsletters for deals like BookBub, and nearly every promotion is reflected on all the other retailers. Another point is the health of Barnes & Noble isn't the best, so who knows if it will be around in five years. And I actually remember when I first started writing in 2011, and back then people were declaring the death and demise of Barnes & Noble. We are closer to a 10 year anniversary than not, and every month is followed by these doom sayings, as Barnes & Noble seems to be trucking along. So no, I don't worry about my purchases at all. But if anyone does, I highly recommend them to use Calibre. Calibre is a free ebook managing system and they can remove that pesky DRM that is more malware than security. Keep a copy of all your books and you'll never have to worry again. In fact, with Calibre, use any e-reader you want. Kindles, Nooks, Kobos, it doesn't matter because you are in control of your software. 
Now, one very cool feature you'll find on the Nook is the interactions with the Barnes & Noble stores. If you bring your Nook and connect to Wi-Fi, your Nook will have access to one hour of reading time to any book in their catalog, simulating how someone can grab a book and read it in their cafe. And while I wish it was longer than one hour, you have access to books that the physical stores don't carry, which is such a nice feature. Now let's talk about price, because this is the important point where someone will either pick up an e-reader or not. The new Glowlight 3 and the Kindle Paperwhite start at $120 and they scale up from there. And you'll be going at least $100 more if you want Kobo's waterproof offerings. I find the price of an e-reader is an upfront cost, which consumers tend to shy away from. Really, you're buying the hardware and saving on the free and discounted ebooks, which blow physical book prices out of the water. Here's the thing I'd like to add with the Glowlight Plus. It's no longer new. Barnes & Noble updated it with the Glowlight 3 this year, and while it is a phenomenal update in most regards, you are losing out on the water and dust resistance. Luckily, you can find it on eBay for much less than the price of new. I paid $70 for mine, and it came in perfect condition. This means you can pick a Glowlight Plus up for less than the price of a base Kindle, which is as bare bones as you get, and $60 as of the time of this recording and the link in the description. At $60, I truly do believe the Glowlight Plus is the best budget e-reader on the market right now. And this doesn't get into supporting the last major bookstore chain in the United States. If you're new to e-readers and you want the best hardware for the best price, or maybe you're looking to give one as a gift, and you don't want to drop nearly $300 on a Kindle Oasis or a similar Kobo offering for waterproofing, pick up the Glowlight Plus. And hey, if you like it, the Glowlight 3 is even more feature-packed. At $60, the Glowlight Plus is the perfect entry point if you're interested in getting into e-readers. And for all of you out there who e-read and use Kindle, Nook, and Kobo, leave a comment. Also, subscribe to the channel if you support more videos like this one. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.